Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today we're going to talk about entering check numbers into a check register, but, but what happens if you want to use a check number again? You've already got it in the check register, so we're going to see how we can allow it, but we're going to warn the user, say, hey, you've already used this check number before, but it will let you put it in if you really want to. That's what we're going to cover today. Today's question comes from David in Salt Lake City, Utah, one of my gold members. David says, I remember seeing one of your videos about the check register and handling check numbers, specifically how to add a new number to the register and how to check if a number has already been used. I just can't remember where it was. Was that in the seminar or the extended cut of the check register tech help video? Well, it was in the seminar. So I've got the basic check register seminar where I show you how to create a check register, enter in all the information, uh, we've got, you know, uh, debit and credit, check when it's been cleared and so on. Then in the extended cut, we build um, a report for that. We do a running sum, but I don't show you how to check for a duplicate check number. Now, I also do have a more advanced check register seminar. We'll talk about this more at the end of class. And in lesson three, when we talk about printing checks, this lesson does have some logic in it to check to see if the check number has already been used. So we're gonna do a little bit of that today. Now, obviously the easiest way to prevent this is to simply index the check number field. If you index it and set it no duplicates, then you physically cannot add a duplicate check number, but sometimes you want to. And in the real world, it can happen. I've actually done this myself. I accidentally ordered a whole big box of checks, not just a little box, but like, you know, a thousand some odd checks. And I duplicated the same number range as an older box. Now the bank doesn't care. They don't validate the uniqueness of your printed check numbers at all. That's really just for your own accounting. They'll process whatever physical check goes through the system. So you have to make your database flexible enough to be able to handle that, but you still want to warn the user, Hey, you know, you already put check number 102 in. Are you sure you want to do this? But then let them. Now, I know if you're like me, most of us probably only write a handful of checks every year. So it's not that big of a deal. But when you buy a whole ton of checks and they're not cheap, you might need to reuse them. So that's what we're going to do today. Now, this is going to be a developer level video. What does that mean? Well, that means if you've never done any VBA programming before, go watch this video. It'll teach you everything you need to know to get started in about 20 minutes. Go watch this video on variables. Go watch my D lookup video. You'll want to learn about NZ, null zero, and of course, string concatenation, and of course, double double quotes. These are always tricky. Watch this video on the message box function specifically and how to get it to return a value, yes or no, right? And here's the big one. Go watch the before update event video. These are all free videos. They're on my YouTube channel. They're on my website. Go watch those and come on back. All right, I'm gonna start with my standard blank template, but you can use any database that you want. First thing we're gonna do is create a real quick check register table. So create table design. We've got our check ID, that's our auto number. Now that's for tracking things internally in your database. That's not the same as your check number. So the next field is gonna be the check number. And I'm going to leave that as short text. Now, I know the industry standard is usually numbers only, but I have had checks before, usually ones I've gotten from clients that have had letters in them, right? What's my rule for whether or not to use text or a number? Are you going to be doing math on this field? Right? We're never going to be adding two check numbers together, right? Or taking the average of a group of check numbers. So don't worry about storing that as an actual number. This gives you the flexibility to put text in there. All right, then we got our amount, that's currency. We've got the check date. Don't use just the word date. Remember, date is a reserved word. You want to avoid that. That'll be a date time field. And you can put the default value down here if you want to as equals date or whatever. That's up to you. And then uh, a description and then notes. I like both a description and notes for something like this because the short text description will show up in lists if you want it to, whereas notes, long text fields, memo fields, right? They can't show up in things like combo boxes. So I like to add both just, just to have it in case you need it. 
All right, saving this real quick is my check T. The auto number primary key, yup, there it goes. Save it, and if any of this, by the way, is not uh, is news to you, go watch my Access Beginner course if you've never done any of this stuff before. All right, let's make a little form for that table now. I always keep my single and continuous form templates here. These are just blanks. I'm gonna copy that, copy, paste. We'll call it the check F. There it is right there. We'll right click design view. I am going to bind this form by double clicking here on the properties. Go to data. We're gonna bind the form to that check table we just made. So now it's got all the fields in it, right? Now this form is bound to that table. So now we can add existing fields. We can click, shift click, get all those, click and drag, drop them right here in the detail section. I keep these other two fields around for uh, just for formatting purposes. We can get rid of these labels. I'm going to use this to format paint over the ID and then we can get rid of these guys, just like that. And now it's just a matter of squirreling these guys up here so they look nice and pretty. There's our check number. Yes, I know there's some tools and tricks and shortcuts you could do to make all this easier. I'm a little old school. I don't mind taking a minute just to click and drag a few fields around like this. I'm gonna take this notes field and slide it down here in the footer. That way, whatever record we're on, we can use that for notes, right? And then as far as the labels across the top go, well, I'm gonna use this one label, make it nice and big like that. All right, there's the ID, just hit a bunch of spaces, right? Check number, space, 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 amount, space, 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 date, and then description. See, nice and simple, nice and quick. All righty, now, let's close this, and we're gonna save it, close it, open it back up again. Now, let's do a little, uh, uh, Alignment here. Let's select all of these guys. I like to have everything lined up to the left. I know the accountants in the group don't like that, but that's what I like to do. And I'm the one building the database. You build your database however you want. Okay. So we'll start off with check number 101 for 100 bucks. And this is for a model bird of prey. Check number 102 for $65. And that was for pain sticks. Check number 103 for 90 bucks, and that was for a tooth sharpener. I'm buying Christmas presents for my Klingon guests. Okay. Now, here's the issue. We got another check number 102 that gets issued. Again, let's say you got the same problem where you've got, uh, you know, multiple books that accidentally got printed to the same checks, right? Okay. So now it just let me put that in there. And again, like I mentioned at the top of the video, you could just index this field, but then you can't put a number in here twice. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the before update, the before update. We're gonna check this value when it's entered and make sure it's not already in the table. All right, so let's delete that record. Let's go to design view. We're gonna find this guy. We're gonna go to events and go to the before update event. Remember the beauty of the before update event is that it can be canceled, right? It can be canceled. My VBA editor opens up. Right, before update goes before the record gets committed to the table. Uh, after update goes after the change has been committed. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is check for a null value because a null value will throw all this all off, right? So if somehow they put a value in there, then they go back and delete it. If it's null now, then just exit the sub, right? So if is null, check num, then exit sub, and nothing to do, right? Now, I want to look up in that table to see if this check number exists. All right, so we got to store that ID somewhere. Let's make dim ID as a long. And I'm going to say ID equals D lookup check ID from the check table. What am I looking for? The check number in that table equals, and then we have, it's, it's text, so we have to put it inside of double, double quotes. I've done multiple videos on this. Double, double quotes. Then we got to close that string and check num. This is the check number on the form. And, and then we need to go quote, 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 right? That's, that's double quotes inside of a string. So this whole thing just turns into a single set of double quotes inside the string. Go watch my concatenation video if any of this is uh, confusing, all right? Now, this could possibly not be in the table. In fact, most of the time, it's not gonna be in the table, so that's gonna have a null value in it. So we're gonna handle that with the nz function, right? And for that, we're gonna make it a zero. So it's gonna be zero if it's null. In other words, if it doesn't exist. 
okay? So if the ID is not zero, then a duplicate check was found. And then we're gonna message box the user and say, hey, we already got one. Are you sure you wanna allow it, right? So if message box, uh, this check, oh, let's, uh, let's make it the check number. Check number and check num was already used. Uh, do you want to allow a duplicate, right? Question mark, and then we're gonna go VB yes, no, cancel. I always like to include cancel, plus VB question, plus uh, VB default button two, so no is the default. And then we'll give it a title of duplicate check found. Let's make that title case. Check found like that. Okay, now, if that, if, the, if their answer is anything other than VB yes, then we're going to cancel equals true and then check num dot undo. That'll undo what they put in that box. And if. Okay. And then end if here. And that ought to do it. Let's test it. Save it. Debug compile once in a while. Let's close it. Close it. Open it. All right. Let me put in here 104. Uh, something else. Okay, let me put 102 in again. Oh, look at that, 102 was already used. Do you want to allow a duplicate? Yes. All right, how about if we do it 103? Oh, it's duplicate, would you like to allow a duplicate? I'm gonna say no this time, no. Let's see, it undid it, put it back to where it was before. Okay, now. What happens if I come up to this check number 101 and I try editing it, but I put it back to 101. Ah, it says check number 101 was already used. Do you want to allow a duplicate? Well, if I say yes, I mean, it leaves it, but it's not really a duplicate, is it? Let's do that again. Let's put a one in there. Do you want to allow a duplicate? If I say no, it's gonna undo it back to that. But why is it catching this as a duplicate when it's not a duplicate? Anybody? I'll give you a hint. It's in this code. It's in this D lookup that we did. Can you figure it out? Pause the video and see if you can figure that out. Did you get it? Well, the answer is we're literally just checking for the check number, but what we also have to do is we have to make sure it's not the item that we're on, right? If I enter in another 101, I wanna to check to make sure it's not the same ID because it could just be the check that we're on, right? So here, we're gonna just add in here, the check ID is not the same as the check ID that we're on and the check number is different or is the same, right? So the check number has to match, be the same check number, but it's got to be a different ID. Okay. And that should get rid of that problem. So let's come back in here. I'll re-edit this to 101 and it doesn't see it as a duplicate. But if I come down here and put in another 101, then it yells at you, see? Okay. Not that hard to do, right? Just a little D look up and then warn the user and then allow it or cancel it. So you don't have to do much. That's like what? Uh, one, two, three, without the comments, what, what, eight, nine lines of code. And we added a whole lot of functionality to our database. And that's why learning VBA is so cool. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I do have this thing called the check register seminar that covers lots of stuff. It goes through all the basics, calculating a running balance. Yes, even in the forms printing checks, and yes, even with the uh, the numbers there, right? We teach how to convert currency to English, batch printing checks, so you can put them all in the system and then mail them all at once by printing them all at once, payees and categories, multiple accounts, all kinds of other stuff. Reporting, right? See what your uh, categories are. So lots of stuff. One of my favorite seminars, I'll put a link down below. Now also, today, for the members in the extended cut, we're going to add account numbers to this because right now our table only stores one checking account. So we're gonna add an account number so we can double check for each account has that check number been used. All right, we'll do that in the extended cut. We're also going to auto fill the next check number. So if I type in account number one, two, three, it'll tell you the next check number should be 105 or whatever it is. 
and then we'll visually display the duplicates with a little conditional formatting. That's all going to be in the extended cut for the members only. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. Everybody gets some free training, and we all have a lot of fun. But that is going to do it for your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject. And you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.